Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about chillers. So we are going to chill and then go watch Netflix. All right, so I've got three different kinds of chillers here and then there's one that is not here that I will mention. Um, so most of you guys are super aware of good old crappy immersion chiller that comes with a homebrew kit. Everyone's probably got one. Everyone's probably got a bunch just because people are constantly giving them away. I've tried to give this one away like tons of times. Um, so that's the first one we're going to talk about. Uh, actually, let's just talk about the elephant in the room. Good old ice bath. So unless you're getting your kidneys removed, ice baths totally suck. It's such a waste of ice. Ice is expensive. Who knew that? Like when you go to the grocery store, it's like $3 a bag. And like, if you're getting four bags, it's $12. That's so like a whole brew's worth of, of expense, basically. Anyway, so only for kidney removal. All right, now let's get back to immersion chillers. So everyone kind of knows how this works. Like you hook it up to a hose, runs cold water. You stick this in your kettle and you let it sanitize for 10 minutes while it's boiling. And then you basically just turn on your hose and it chills with these copper coils they are really good at exchanging heat. So the heat from your wort goes into the water that's in here and then it shoots out hot water, essentially. This is the easiest way to chill beer just because you don't have to deal with pumps. You don't have to deal with a lot of hoses. Um, you literally only need two garden hoses depending on your connections. I only have silicone on here because I run this to my actual kitchen tap. This one's a little different. Um, so this big boy is the Hydra by Jaded Brewing. Um, so this is essentially like four times as much copper as this, probably five actually, now that I look at it. Um, so this actually holds up to the same speeds as counterflow and plate chillers do, um, just because of the sheer volume of surface area of these copper tubes. There's three tubes that make three wraps in here. So I, my tap water is like 70, 75 degrees, depending on the day. And I can use this and hooked up to my hose outside, get a five gallon batch down to pitching temp in around 10 minutes. And that's just kind of across the board what I've found. So if you're looking for difference in speed, if you get good equipment, there's not a ton of difference. Like they say that you can get um, boiling wort down to fermentable temperature What's with this guy. If you're using 58 degrees and 18 gallons of water, it only takes three minutes, which is insane. And I think this counterflow one, they say about, they say about five minutes for that, but like give or take two minutes, who cares? Um, the reason I really like immersion chillers is because you don't have to use pumps again. The cleanup is so much easier. You can literally hose this guy down and it'll be ready for your next batch. Um, there's a lot more cleaning involved in the other two chillers I'm gonna talk about here soon. So, I mean, I'm just gonna tell you guys, this is my favorite just because I hate cleaning and it makes my life a lot easier. So, on to our next one. So this is a counterflow chiller. Um, I actually just got this. I wasn't really aware of how these guys worked. I didn't really ever look into them until um, x -Chillerator sent me this guy. And so this is just the x by x -Chillerator. This is like their main product. This is also supposed to be one of the fastest five gallons of wort down to pitching temp in five minutes. So how counterflow chillers work. So you're connecting your hot wort to the inside tube, which is copper, you can kind of see that it's copper right there. Um, and there's a thermometer, just so you can see what temp it's coming out at. And then you connect your cold water into the bottom. So this is just standard hose fitting again. Um, I've, when I've used this, I've gotten down to pitching temp in about 10 minutes. Um, just again, because my groundwater is so hot. Um, but if you're using like 58 degree, like if I were to use it up north on my like 55 degree well water, I'm sure it would take like 
three to five minutes. It's insanely cold. It like hurts your hands when you're washing your hands. Um, so uh, another cool thing about this, it's not just a straight like copper tube in a PEX tube. There's actually inside the PEX tube wrapped around the copper, and I'll put a diagram down here, is um, it's basically like a piece of plastic that makes it like whirlpool, the water whirlpool around the copper tubing. So that just gives more surface area to the water so it can chill faster. The more surface area you have touching the copper, the more chilling is happening like in that pass. The only one of these chillers that you can't like just run your wort through once and into your fermenter is the immersion chiller because like you're not running your wort anywhere. It's just sitting in the kettle. Technically, if you have cold enough water, and that's what the thermometer is for, you can um, just make sure that it's like, it gets down to like 70 degrees or whatever, and you can go straight from here into your fermenter. So this you have to use a pump with. So basically, I would have a hose from my kettle going into here, right? And then this would have to hook onto here so that the wort can be pumped through. It's, it takes pressure and it, it's not a little bit of pressure. It takes a lot. I can just tell you guys from when I used it last, I had my Blickman Riptide. Actually, I'm gonna leave this out. So I was using my Blickman Riptide, which is a pretty powerful pump. And um, from when I was using that hangover attachment to when I put it on the chiller, I think I lost about half my pressure. So like I couldn't even get a whirlpool when it came out of this because it just, it, you know, it's so much volume going so far, you know, you can only push work so far with the same amount of pumping power. It takes some plumbing to get this guy set up, uh, a little bit more plumbing, I think, than the plate chiller that I'm about to show you. Actually, it's, it's essentially the same. It's exactly the same, actually. I have the exact same fittings. I actually took the fittings off my plate chiller to put them on here. The nice thing I do I do like about this, which I could also do to my plate chiller, is the thermometer. I thought that was a neat thing to be able to see exactly what it's coming out at. So to clean this guy, you've got to run uh, some, like, I always use sodium percarbonate, which is basically OxyClean free, but you can also use uh, like brewer's wash or whatever, or they actually sent me this stuff, brewery wash. Whatever. Um, but yeah, you've gotta get a solution going through there um, to just take out all the wort. Um, you know, it is kind of a closed system and then you've gotta kinda roll it around to get everything out, like all your water, all your wort. So it takes a little bit more effort to clean it, but not nearly as much as a plate chiller. <sighs> okay, guys, I hate plate chillers. <laughs> all right, so um, I only have this because it came with my claw hammer and, um, you know, the thing that, all right, before I make disparaging comments about plate chillers, I'll tell you guys how they work. So I actually, I'm going to put a really cool diagram down here. It's, they look awesome when they're cut open. Um, I love the idea of it. I don't like the cleaning of it. Uh, so basically what happens is there's plates in here, there's 20 in here, and they're spaced really close together. How this works is you attach your hose here, hot work comes out here, you should also attach a hose here. Kettle to your pump, and then pump to work in, and then it'll shoot out, and you'll either put it in, you can recirculate it, or you can just put it straight into your fermenter. Hot work comes from this side, cold water comes from this side, they basically go on plates that touch each other, but they don't hit, obviously, or that would be contamination. And uh, it just, they go around like that through the whole plate, and then it pops out cold wort and hot water. So you can also just pitch this directly into the fermenter. I can't, um, I think if I were to use this with an actual hose, I've only used this with my kitchen sink, so the pressure isn't enough to drop it down like less than 100 degrees. Um, but if I were, I'm sure I could pitch I, the cold wort directly into a fermenter and have it be fermenter temperatures. Um, I don't really have a good idea of how long it would take because 
you know, I've never done it with like the proper pressure. Um, so the thing I don't like about plate chillers is no matter how hard I try, I cannot get all the liquid out of here. And that means I can never properly clean it. I have run this thing with caustic. I've run it with brewer's wash. I've run it with sanitizer. I cannot seem to get it to not have crap in it for the next brew. And that scares me because I don't know what's going in my beer. And like, if you guys have hot tips on how to clean these things, I don't know if it's just me, but I seriously spent an entire week with caustic, changing the water in it every few hours, and it will still run brown. And I don't know what to do, so that's my experience with plate chillers. I mean, it, it was a cool thing and it definitely works better than this shitty thing. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, oh, also you have to use a pump with these. So like, unless, um, I started using this with my claw hammer. You have to use a pump anyway to run the sprayer on the top. So I already had the pump going. I already had the quick releases on here. Um, and that was fine. Um, but you know, the more and more you use it, the grosser and the grosser it gets. And I can't recommend it. Um, but I can recommend super heavy duty immersion chiller. Also this counterflow chiller, way easier to clean. If you think about it, it's just a single tube. So there's less crevices for work to get stuck in. So like this is super easy to flush compared to one of these. If you guys like plate chillers, like, and think I'm doing something totally wrong and want to put me in my place, like, please feel free. Cause like, do you see that? That's brown liquid that just came out. And it's on my pants now. Let's see. Yep. This was completely drained. It's just as long, the longer it sits, the things start coming out. And I think this is disgusting. So now I'm gonna keep doing my caustic thing because I can't stop myself. Well, I think that's all the chilling I can do for today. So if you guys have other questions or know about other chillers that I didn't mention here, let me know in the comments. Um, I'm always looking for new gear. I'm kind of a gear head when it comes to brewing. Um, thanks so much for watching, like and subscribe. If you guys wanna get all my videos early, add free videos, merch, monthly happy hour. We're actually getting our Halloween happy hour organized right now. Go ahead and join my Patreon above and I will see you guys next time. I gotta give a shout out to my newest patron. <laughs> your mother was a hamster and your father smells of elderberries. A, I love that quote. B, I made a beer after that quote. It turned out terribly. This was a long time ago, but Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate fun, like, usernames. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Is basically you connect hot wort to one tube, and that's the copper tube. You can see it. this lives inside this um, PEX tubing. And then you connect a hose to the other. So basically you're connecting your... I showed you guys wrong. But basically what happens is uh, cold water comes from this side, hot water comes from this side. Actually, based on how I'm showing you here. So 